All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world today. Hopefully everyone out there is safe, uh, you know, from all the elements that are going on, whether it's the storms or the virus or whatnot. Uh, wishing you uh, much safety out there. So today uh, we are going to talk about Navy Nurse Corps. All right. And uh, I did a commissioning video a while back, but I realized that I included Nurse Corps, Medical Corps, Medical Service Corps, and Dental Corps all in one video. And that could be very long. So uh, I decided to break them up into uh, um, parts where it's not a long video and you can watch this information in regards to the specific core that you're trying to apply to. So today we're going to talk about the nurse core. All right. And we are going to start with the nurse candidate program. Now, the reason why we're starting with the nurse candidate program is because this program is actually coming up in July and um, not a lot of active duty members know about this program. So we're going to start with nurse candidate program and then we will move into uh, medical Enlisted Commissioning Program, MESEP, and then we will end with Nurse Corps Direct Accession. So first and foremost, you must uh, get familiar with the program authorizations, all right? Program authorizations can be found on My Navy HR, uh, used to be NPC, but now it is My Navy HR. Um, but you can literally type in program authorization Navy and pull up these program authorizations. Okay. So program authorization 116 Charlie, it is the updated authorization for the nurse candidate program. As you can see here, it's, it, uh, it got updated April, 2019. So this is what we're officially using now. So let's discuss the nurse candidate program. Let's go through this. So it talks about um, some qualifications. One, you must be a, a US citizen, right? You must not have reached your 42nd birthday uh, by the time of commissioning. And you must be enrolled in a full-time accredited nursing, bachelor's of science nursing program. And that school must be accredited by ACEN, Accreditation Commission for Education and Nursing, or CCNE, Commission on College Collegiate Nursing Education, okay? And for the nurse candidate program, uh, you cannot have completed more than uh, the second year of your bachelor program because there's only one and two year scholarships, which we'll talk about. You must have a cumulative grade point average of a 3.0 to apply. And let me make this clear. Cumulative grade point average is all of the colleges that you have attended previously. So it doesn't matter if it was a university or if it was a uh, state college or a technical college. If you attended any college and received the grade, that will be counted along with uh, any other college that you've ever been to. And even if you only took one class, that will be counted. Okay. So do understand that. You will attend school full-time. And your bachelor's degree must be completed within 24 months. Your bachelor's of science in nursing. Okay, so candidates who enter the program during their fourth year of uh, the nursing program will serve four years. Candidates who enter during their third year receive a two-year uh, scholarship, will serve nurse corps of five years. Total service obligation is eight years. All right, so here's some things that you need to know about the nurse candidate program. In regards to pay and allowances, you will receive an accession bonus of $10,000, right? So if you get selected for the nurse candidate program, you will receive $5,000 up front, and then you will receive another $5,000, which is a total of $10,000, which, and it's right here. $5,000 will be, a, be paid upon acceptance, and then the other 5,000 will be paid after six months into the program. And then while you are in this program, for every month 
that you are in this program, you will receive a stipend of $1,000 per month up to 24 months. Okay. So $10,000 up front and then $1,000 for every month you're in school. So if you get a one year scholarship, then you receive $12,000. All right. If you have a two year scholarship, then you will receive the $24,000 on top of the 10,000 up front. All right. And of course, that is a scholarship, so that is used towards your tuition for nursing school. Now, while you are in this program, the nurse candidate program, right? While you are in this program, you are considered a reservist, okay? You're not on active duty. You're not going to be asked to perform active duty um, responsibilities. You are a reservist. Um, in order to apply for the nurse candidate program, you must reach out to your local medical officer recruiter. Um, every district has a medical officer recruiter. Um, so honestly, you can either reach out to the local Navy recruiting district, or you can Google Navy officer recruiting station and reach out to your local medical officer recruiter. The steps into applying is once you reach out to us, we will help you build your package. And your package is just like any other officer package. You must write your motivational statement you must have letter of recommendations. You must have interviews with nurse, nurse corps officers. Um, and you must speak on, of course, any uh, adverse items that could be in your package, as well as you must send in a copy of all your transcripts and your acceptance letter for the school. Once we build your complete package, your package then goes to a board and that board convenes. And if you are selected, then you will attend that nursing school and if you are selected for a two-year scholarship, then that's when you will receive the $24,000 on top of the $10,000 for a total of $34,000. If you are only accepted for the one-year scholarship, then you will receive the $12,000 for every month that, you know, that you're in school, and you will, receive the, you will also receive the $10,000, which um, goes to uh, $24,000 or $22,000. So, uh, but either way, you get a one-year scholarship, and you get a two-year scholarship. Um, once you are finished with nursing school, you are then sent off to officer development school where you are taught your officer leadership uh, uh, tools. And once you graduate officer development school, that's when you start working as a Navy nurse in the nurse corps. So that is the first program that we talked about today is the nurse candidate program. That board usually convenes from July to October um, or July 1st to September, uh, when I say 31st, uh, packages are sent then. And then uh, the board convenes in October and results, I think last year results came out around November. So uh, as, as an active duty sailor, you are allowed to apply to this program. Now, the caveat to that is you must receive a conditional release from your enlisted community manager. So um, I know for HM, for example, when last time I spoke to the community manager, their rules of engagement were in order to get a conditional release for this program, you must not have more than one year left on your contract. Uh, you must not have any, you must not owe any money for SRB or still receiving money for SRB. And you must not have an obligation for a C school. Um, if you have those three items, then at the time, the ECM was not approving the conditional release for this program. But if you don't have any of those going against you, then you are more than welcome to apply for this program as well as the MESEP program. So be aware of this option that the nurse candidate program is out there, okay? Do I have any questions on the nurse candidate program? Any questions on the nurse candidate program itself before we move uh, next to the medical enlisted commissioning program? Sure. I'm all ears. Um, no, sir. Okay. And I see uh, Agent Two Watson, you just logged in. Uh, do you have any questions in regards to the nurse candidate program? Uh, uh, no, from what I know about it, I, I missed my window for this as far as like where I'm at right now. So 
but you can apply for an active duty, right? But you have, but you can't have your RN yet. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, yes, you can apply for the nurse candidate program while while you're on active duty. But this is not for uh, the the person that is already uh, BSN and licensed RN. No. We're going to talk about that. Okay. That is okay. that is actually that's that's nurse corps director session, and I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about that after mm -hmm. I talk about MESEP. Got it. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll be all ears. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if there are no questions on nurse candidate program, and I didn't see any questions in the group, uh, I was waiting to see if anybody had any questions. So if there are none, then we will move forward to the uh, MESEP program. So let's go to that program authorization, which is right here. It is a uh, PA 116 alpha. Again, all of these program authorizations can be found on my Navy HR, which is the new Navy NPC. So when you go when you go to the old NPC page, it is it looks like this now, my Navy HR, and uh, and it pulls up. You can um, go to career management, community management, officer, and then program authorizations, and that's where you will find all of the commissioning program authorizations. Okay, um, so we're gonna go to MESEP next, and then we'll end with 116, which is the direct session one. All right, so MESEP, most active duty sailors know about the MESEP. This is the very common one. Uh, that's the reason why I wanted to talk about NCP first, because not a lot of active duty sailors are aware of that one, um, being that it's just got opened up to active duty. Um, so this is a very common program that most sailors are aware of, but we'll still go through it just in case there are some things that uh, people are not sure of. Um, so again, I like to use the program authorization because I'm, I'm, I like the black and white. Um, I didn't, I, I could do a PowerPoint, but I just prefer the black and white so you can see it exactly for what it is. Um, all right, so qualifications for MESEP, again, must be a U.S. citizen. And I say that because some, some people want to apply for commissioning programs, but they don't have their citizenship. And unfortunately, I have to tell them, you, you can't apply for a commissioning program if you do not have your citizenship or if you haven't been naturalized. So, um, I have to, I have to uh, reiterate that. You must have your U.S. citizenship. Um, you must be commissioned by your 42nd birthday. So this is talking about, you know, you've actually made it through nursing school and you're, you're going to sign your commissioning documents. All of that has to be done by your 42nd birthday. It can't be, well, I'm 41 now, so can I apply? So that, that means I got selected before I was 42. No, because you got to consider those two years of nursing school, your BSN. So you'll actually be 43 uh, by the time you graduate and actually sign commissioning documents. So must, must uh, note that as well. The education requirements are once again the same across the board for Nurse Corps. Uh, you have to apply to an accredited college that, has, that is accredited by either ACN or CCNE. Um, a lot of, I've heard many sailors only mention CCNE, but I'm, it is ACN as well. So you have those options as far as the school to choose from. Um, but if you notice, MESIP is just a little bit more lenient with their GPA requirement. Uh, NCP has to be 3.0 and above, and that's cumulative, has to. I cannot apply you without a 3.0 or above. Uh, MESIP, you can apply with a 2.5 or above. And, that, and again, this is cumulative GPA. So for every sailor that's watching this, I have to reiterate to you, cumulative means from the first time you ever took a college course until now. And, and it doesn't matter if it was state, local, university, if you took a course and if it was one class, that is a part of your cumulative GPA report, okay? Uh, you must have a certified copy of the SAT and ACT scores, no older than three years from the application due date. And these are keyword minimum recommended scores. The keyword there is recommended. It doesn't say mandatory, it says recommended. So this is what we like to call in the office of recruiting world, we like to call this competitive scores. Meaning if you're really looking to get selected, you, you might wanna make sure that your SAT scores are somewhere in these categories and or your ACT scores are in, the, are in those categories. Same thing with your GPA. You can apply with the 2.6 cumulative, but if you want to be competitive, we typically try to tell our sailors, 
3.5 or higher is competitive. However, that does not mean that you can't get selected with a 3.0 because I've seen it. I've seen it. So don't ever let your cumulative GPA stop you from applying because that is only one part of the whole uh, sailor concept in regards to selecting for an officer. Don't ever let that stop you from applying. You must be enrolled in a full-time school year round. And of course your official transcripts uh, will, will be sent to uh, NPEDIC up at uh, uh, Walter Reed now in Bethesda. Okay, so continuing to go through this. So uh, service obligation is eight years minimum. That's what, if you are selected for the MESEP program, you will give back eight years. And pay and allowances. So selectees will continue. So here's the big difference between MESEP and NCP that uh, some people are not aware of. With MESEP, selectees will continue to receive full pay and allowances and remain promotion eligible while in college. Selectees pay for tuition, fees, books, and other school-related expenses. Students may not use Navy-sponsored tuition assistance. Obviously, you're not on active duty anymore, but may seek financial assistance from other sources, such as your post-911 GI Bill. So the question I typically get as a medical officer recruiter is, Chief, um, and, and I actually had this happen uh, with a prior applicant of mine. Um, an applicant of mine actually got selected for MESEP and NCP. And he said, Chief, I got to take some time to think about this. And I told him, I said, HM1, there's not much to think about. As much as I would love to bring you in under the NCP umbrella, because that helps me, I would be doing you a disservice if I told you to choose NCP over MESEP. And the reason why is because with MESEP, you will receive uh, more financial benefits, meaning you will continue to get your pay, as well as you can use your uh, post-911 GI Bill. And when you do the math, the total math of two years of nursing school, of full E5, E6, E7, or E4 pay on top of your post-911 GI Bill, and you do that math to the NCP, which is the $10,000 up front, and then the $1,000 a month for every month that you're in school, your pay is going to be higher for your MESEP than it is for your um, NCP. Okay? So... But the reason why I tell sailors to apply for both is because you never want to put your eggs in one basket. If you apply to MESEP and NCP and you get selected for both, like the HM1 I applied did, you can choose which one to take. But if you only apply to MESEP or if you only apply to NCP and you don't get selected, you left options on the table. So all Chief is trying to tell you here is, if you have options, use them all and then make a determination and, or a decision. But don't only apply to one because you possibly left one. I've seen people not get selected for MESEP and then get selected for NCP. And so, yeah, you might not have been able to use the amount of money that you had for MESEP, but the ultimate goal for either one of these is what? To become a nurse. So you're still reaching your ultimate goal, right? You, you can never lose sight of the ultimate goal. So that's my, uh, that's my leadership advice in regards to these two programs. Um, apply to both. And the, as far as the packages go, they really are very identical. There are some forms that are a little bit different only because for the nurse candidate program, uh, we fall under the recruiting district, Commander Navy Recruiting Command, while, um, the MESEP falls under uh, Navy Medicine BUMAT. Um, and so the forms, some forms are a little bit different, but the package itself is pretty much very identical. Motivational statements, um, interviews, letter of recommendations, transcripts, um, and anything that might be adverse, right? So that's pretty much it. Are there any questions on MESEP? I about, I'm listening. about the MESEP and NCP. So 
is it is it possible for an agent like E3 who like who is stay in a first year in the Navy be eligible? Great question. So to answer your question as far as eligibility, there is no rank eligibility for these. You can apply as an HN. Oh. You can apply as an HN with one year in if, if you would like. Um, but let me say this. This is where we as leaders do what we call managing expectations. When you apply for an officer commissioning package, and this, and this might have to be a separate uh, Zoom, <laughs> But the package itself is very detailed and the things that they are looking for, you have to be displaying leadership. Because you got to remember, even though you're, you're putting this package in to become a nurse, you are going to be a naval officer first. Every Navy nurse is a naval officer first, just like we are all sailors first. So you have to be able to show in your officer commissioning package that you are displaying leadership. And I'll go back to my scenario. If I have an HN that's only been in a year, managing their expectations, sure, putting in the package itself is good learning how to do the package. But if you, if you don't have substance in your package, then the realization is you might not be ready yet, right? So I wouldn't tell you no, but I would manage your expectations to say, let's try to get you on the right path to be competitive, right? Let's talk about how we can make your evals amazing. Let's talk about how we make and get you mapped. Let's talk about possibly uh, winning Sailor of the Quarter or Sailor of the Year. Let's talk about getting involved in these collateral duties, right? These organizations and associations, right? Let's talk about volunteering, right? All the things that we really talk about, let's talk about it because that's what they are going to look for. And I always tell sailors, the same thing, the same items uh, that it takes to make a chief, it takes to make an officer. It really does, right? We want well-rounded well sailors to eventually become chiefs and be leaders. We want well-rounded sailors to become officers and become leaders. The difference is we also need you to get this nursing degree, <laughs> right? So... <laughs> I hope that, does that answer your question? Yes, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Okay. And that, again, that is a great question. Um, this, is, this is part of why I love leadership because you truly have to manage sailors' expectations. It's great to get out there and want to be an officer and go, and go do the things to become an officer, but you truly have to do those things. You truly have to get out there and grind and you have to lead and you have to trust and you have, te have to have teamwork. Everything that's on that eval, you have to do those things if you really want to make it to this level. So, great question. All right, and so we're going to end with Nurse Corps Director Session. I actually like the fact that I, I broke this down and only do a Nurse Corps, because last time I, I did a video like this, I did all uh, of the medical cores, and it, the video was like almost two hours long. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch a video that long. So this is great because it won't be too long. Okay, so the, the two ways, the two options that we just talked about, MESEP and uh, Nurse Candidate Program, are what we call student options, right, or training options. These are for those who do not have the degree, they don't have the license, they don't have the experience, they have aspirations. And the Navy wants to help you achieve that. And so they're going to send you to school to get the degree, and then they're going to automatically give you a job in the Navy to gain that experience. That's what those two programs were about. This program is called Direct Accession, and this is for those who already have their BSN, they are already passed the NCLEX and have their license and have experience as a RN, okay? And we call those Direct Accession. So again, qualifications must be a US citizen, right? Uh, cannot commission past your 42nd birthday. Waivers will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis, right? So we pretty much find out, every, we find out every year if there's going to be a waiver. Usually comes out in October. Um, your accredited degree, again, must be from an ACN college or CCNE college. 
And if we are thinking about CRNAs or nurse practitioners or midwives, then you must have a graduate level degree um, and it must be approved by the Council on Education, Education of Nurse Educational Programs. So C-A-E-P. And now this is key because I've seen this quite often as being a medical officer recruiter. If you attended a foreign nursing school and you achieved your BSN, uh, so this is outside the United States and it's not accredited by ICN or CCNE. Um, I was waiting on it. I was trying to read it to, to, so there is an actual step that we have to do where we have to send your transcripts off to be read to see what um, classes or courses um, we will take based, you know, based on the school that you went to. Um, it says you are eligible for commissioning upon award of a BSN. So what it's saying here is if you went to a college outside of the United States and it's not accredited, um, you can still be commissioned if you, of course, go to a school here that is accredited. Um, but there also are other steps that we can take to try to uh, see what classes that you have can be transferred over. You could call it reciprocity or, or, um, or whatnot. So let's talk about work experience. Work experience for nurses, uh, the, what we're looking for is six months to a year, preferably a year, but a minimum of six months of work experience. And the work experience must be in um, whatever specialty you're trying to come in as. For example, if, you want to be a critical care nurse in the Navy, then your work experience must be in critical care outside the Navy. Um, if your work experience is in med surge, then you can, you can only apply for med surge nurse in the Navy. So you can't work somewhere and then try to apply for that in the Navy. You already have to have that experience. Okay, and then it talks about indoctrination. So of course, uh, once you submit your package and if you get selected, you'll go to officer development school. Every, every last one of these programs, you will have to go to officer development school. That is your leadership training before you actually start working as a Navy nurse. And that is located in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, so some things that I will add to this that is either not mentioned in here, it's probably mentioned in um, our NAV admins or whatnot. So for Nurse Corps Director Session, uh, these are strictly given to the uh, Commander Navy Recruiting Command, meaning it has to go through the medical officer recruiters. And so what you would do is you would reach out to your local medical officer recruiter, and we have a dashboard that comes out, right? It comes out every October, every fiscal year, and is updated every Friday. And on this dashboard, it tells us what the Nurse Corps is looking for. So for example, I can tell you right now, this year, the only two specialties that the Nurse Corps was looking for was critical care nurses and CRNAs. Every other specialty was locked up. We didn't have any openings um, for any specialties other than those two. Um, and this is on the active duty side. Um, so every year that changes, so you basically have to reach out to your medical officer recruiter, in, I would say in September, and we kind of get a uh, gouge on what is getting ready to come out. And then once those quotas come out, uh, we then ask for the packages. We help you build your package, as I mentioned earlier. We help you put everything together, and then we send it off to the board, and then the board convenes. And when the board convenes, it's a waiting game, and then the results come out. You're either selected or you're not. And if you're selected, then again, um, that's when you go to officer development school. Um, I will say to anyone that is looking at doing direct session, definitely try to focus your efforts into the critical care scenery. Um, I don't foresee that going anywhere. We have an abundance of quotas for critical care nurses, and it's very tough to fill them. Um, if you're looking at ER or 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 um, med surge or, you know, any of the more popular can specialties 
right now they're just not open. And I don't know what that's going to look like for the next fiscal year. Um, so that's pretty much all the get all the gals that I have for nurse core uh, director session. Oh, for nurse core director session, if you sign a three year commissioning, right, then you will receive a $20,000 bonus, a session bonus. If you sign a four year commissioning, then you will receive a $30,000 a session bonus. And for critical care nurses, if approved, uh, if you're selected and it's approved, then you will receive a $100,000 a session bonus. And then, and then also for CRNA, uh, you receive a $250,000 a session bonus. So um, those are the accession bonuses. And then one last thing I want to add to, uh, I, I, I tend to tell this to all my nurse applicants, and this is for NCP, MESEP, or direct accession. One of the beauty parts about being a nurse is you have an opportunity to go down many routes, right? You can be a nurse educator. You can look into public health nursing, again, midwifery, but especially uh, CRNA or nurse practitioner, the Navy, you can actually apply to a program called Doings while you're in the Navy, and they will actually send you to school to become a CRNA or a nurse practitioner. And that is on Navy Medicine's budget. You don't pay for that. So, hey, can I ask a question? Absolutely, absolutely. Before you get too far along, because I have like, I think I have like two or three of them lined up, and I don't, I'm afraid I'm going to forget. Absolutely. So, okay, this is great. This is, I thank you for doing this. Uh, this is perfect for me. So, uh, my first question is, so uh, so I'll be coming back uh, active duty as a, with my BSN. And, you know, I understand that I, uh, critical care is where it's at. I'm going to try really hard to get that experience in, you know, do what I got to do. Hopefully, um, fingers crossed, I get a, a short command. Well, I'm going to get a short command, but like a big hospital. Um, so that hopefully I can work there or close. But my question is, is during that time, I... You know, I, I understand that I'll be trying to work a part-time job uh, as an RN in critical care. And then if I'm working towards my master's and I want to um, get my master's degree in whatever it is I'm going to get it in, because that's the, that's the graduate um, program that we're talking about to qualify. Doings, that's at Bethesda, right? That's like the, at the uses. Is that the school you're talking about? So if I... Yeah, you can do uses or you can actually choose. I have my, my old department head actually went to University of South Florida. For her nurse practice, her doctor's a nurse practitioner. Oh. Okay, so once I get my master's and my uh, my uh, my graduate degree, and then I can apply, would I still get that bonus? Like, if I get in accepted, is that still a direct accession with the CRNA? Is that uh, like would I still get like the two hundred fifty thousand dollars bonus? So no, if you do the doings, you uh -huh. get school pay for. You don't get you don't get the school pay for and the bonus. <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> because, I was like, because the, bonus, <laughs> because the bonus is is because of the experience that you're bringing. Okay. So you you would be a new CRNA versus an experienced CRNA. So I let's say I come in and I have my bachelor's and I'm working on my my graduate, uh, and then I I get accepted into um, a direct accession, right? So that's you said that's a hundred fifty thousand dollars sign on bonus, right? Coming in active like I'm so sorry if I misread so, that. So for direct accession, if you're talking, you know, uh, if you're talking most specialties. It'll be 22, I'm sorry, it'll be 30 to 40,000, three year, no, I'm sorry, 20,000 to 30,000 sign on bonus for most specialties. If it's okay. critical care, it's 100,000. 100,000. So even if I'm active duty, like I'm already in HM2 and you know, I'm working part time. Yes, I'm we actually put in, yes, we actually put in an HM1 who was in the reserves, who was working as a critical care nurse. He came in and got the bonus. Cool, that's awesome, uh, okay. And then, so, so what I'd like to do is, is, let's say I direct assess and then I apply for the do-ins or the, the CRNA program. I understand there's no sign-on bonus, but that none of that will affect my bonus if I get accepted into the school. So, so your contract for... Um, it would probably be later, you know, like yeah, that. that that's, that's what I was about to get at. In order to do the do-ins, you have to do minimum tours first. So, so they're going to want you to work as a critical care nurse right, at least at your first duty station and probably well into your second duty station. And then sometime after that second duty station, that's when you'll be eligible to apply for the doings. So it's not like you can come right in and then go right into applying to doings. It's, uh, right. it's, it's basically the same like, thing we do on the listed side where you got to do your minimum time first and then you sure. can apply it. Yeah. Awesome. 
cool. So many opportunities. Um, so there's do-ins and do-ins isn't at uses. That could be anywhere. That's like just a program where I can apply at like the University of South Florida, like you said. Yes, I do know for the nurse practitioner program, like I said, I know specific for that one. Uh, she went to South Florida for that. Now for CRNA, they might only do it at uses. At uses, um, okay. That's, I, I would say in regards to that portion, because that's not in my realm, mm -hmm. I would say definitely reach out to the uses staff, mm -hmm. right? Because they, uh, I know CMC Brown is there. Reach out to the uses staff and ask them. Yeah, I've, I've networked with a couple people and I found Absolutely. some, some Absolutely. mentors. So yeah, okay, super. Thank you very much for answering those questions. And then I, I might have had one more, but I think I kind of forgot it. Um, I'll look up the instruction later and, and probably message you if I have any more questions. Thank you. Okay, okay. definitely. No worries. And uh, Shipmate, uh, I don't know your last name. I just see Joan on here. So uh, Shipmate Joan, did you have any questions? Any more questions? Okay, awesome. Well, this will uh, conclude uh, my short stint for today. We covered MESEP, NCP, and Nurse Corps Direct Session. If there are any questions, if anybody watches this later and you have questions, by all means, please just put it in the comment section or you're more than welcome to send me an email at tristan.mccauley uh, at navy.mil. All right. With that being said, you all stay safe, stay blessed, and uh, look out for the next one. Thank you, Chris. Bye.